Hi, my name is Jim Gibson. Thank you for joining me today on my channel. Really appreciate it. And uh, I've been in the commercial cabling business for almost four decades now. And uh, I've done a lot of buildings. Uh, I trained a lot of people, owned a business that had employees, things like that. We've cabled all over the country uh, for many, many years, many, many decades. Uh, and I've come up with some procedures, some policies, some ideas uh, that really help people when it comes to commercial cabling and uh, really um, made it more professional, uh, helped the customer uh, with some of these tips and tricks and also saved us a lot of time, made us a little more profitable in each area. And because of these experiences, uh, I'm going to pass them on to you. And hopefully if you're interested in, in cabling, uh, that you could learn from these, uh, these tips and I call them tips and tricks of the industry and so you don't have to relearn uh, the same ideas that I had learned. I have a friend um, that I often talk to and, and uh, he's a really great friend and he's been in uh, commercial real estate selling, buying, leasing um, and he's been doing it his whole life and I'm a kind of a newbie, I've only been doing it for uh, 20 years. So every once in a while I have a question and I ask him, what do you think we sh I should do in this area? Or is this a good decision to make? And he would give me his opinion. And as a friend, it's an opinion. Uh, and he's a good friend. And uh, I, I, I could listen to him and when he talks I would say, wow, what great insight he has into the real estate uh, industry and things like that. And I tell him that, thank you for your wisdom, I really appreciate it, man. You've helped me uh, decide to do this or to do that. And he would always laugh. He always laughs about this. And he says, it's not wisdom. <laughs> it is scar tissue. He says, I've made these mistakes and I've learned from these mistakes. So I'm passing on to you these ideas so you don't make the same mistakes. Now that's a, a sign of a really good friend. And he has really helped me over the years. Um, in that area. And I like doing real estate investing, but this is not about real estate. And uh, this is about commercial cabling. So it's the same thing. I've made some mistakes. I've seen the mistakes. I've learned from them. And so hopefully uh, you can learn from my mistakes and my scar tissue. And in some cases I have learned from others when it comes to this area. Uh, but, you know, listen to what I'm going to say and, and maybe this can help you in your business. Uh, so I remember a story once I, I had a, a handful of employees. Actually, I think it's two, two employees. I had a lead employee and I had a newbie. <laughs> and, uh, and so I got a call after we cabled this building, probably 20, under 50 drops uh, type of thing because we were cabling it in, in, you know, over the weekend type of thing. And I got a call on Monday morning and the owner asked me to come out and take a look at the job that these uh, gentlemen had done over the weekend and I was always happy to do that. So I showed up and I said, well, what seems to be the problem or, you know, what is the situation? And he went like this. <laughs> and I, I looked up and I could see <laughs> handprints all over the ceiling. There was handprints. You could tell every single drop ceiling tile that they had opened because there was dirty handprints on each of the drop ceiling tiles. Now there was two failures here. One was obviously we had a newbie there that didn't know any better. And, and of course he said, well, I was wearing gloves. <laughs> and uh, gloves only protect your hands. They do not protect the ceiling tiles. Uh, and the other one is the lead should have known this and should have checked it. He should have saw it and he should have said, stop what you're doing, go wash your hands. And so that's my first advice to you. If you're dealing with ceiling tiles, the drop the ceiling tiles, you know what I'm talking about? that you find in a lot of commercial buildings, you've got to keep your hands clean. You may have to clean them every couple minutes. Uh, so you're not making, you're not giving fingerprints on them. Now, if you've ever done this where you've removed these ceiling tiles, or you actually what we would do is we'd lift them up and slide them over. Um, but up on top of the ceiling tiles, especially in the older buildings that have been, you know, uh, in use for a decade or so, uh, if you fool around up there with cable and all that other stuff, you're going to pick up all the dirt, the dust that has settled on top of these ceiling tiles and your hands are going to be filthy dirty. And uh, of course, if you're not paying attention or if you don't know any better, you're going to be touching these tiles 
and it's going to be all over the place. Now they're not too hard to get the dirt off. You just take the tile down and a moist sponge and it will come off in most cases. Sometimes you have to replace the tile. But better yet, just wash your hands and do it often. Look at your hands. You know, are they dirty? Um, you know, am I making marks on the ceiling tile? Those ceiling tiles need to go back and they need to be, uh, they need to look professional. In other words, they don't, shouldn't have dirt fingerprints as if, you know, I remember once I had a ceiling tile and had a footprint on it. And I thought, how'd that happen? Ah, yeah, I know. The guy took the ceiling tile down, he had it on the ground, and he walked on top of it. You know, just pay attention to that. Maybe uh, you're not used to being super clean, <laughs> but your uh, customer deserves clean ceiling tiles. Uh, the next thing I've noticed and I've learned is I, I remember one time looking at a technician and he was going up and down, up and down on the ladder. And uh, he would go up and get a screwdriver. And then he'd go down and he'd get his electrical tape. And you always need electrical tape when you're pulling cable, by the way. At least we always use electrical tape that attach cables together as you pull them. Uh, but to make a long story short, it's up and down, up and down. So what I would recommend to you is that you get a really significant, nice uh, tool pouch that goes on the side of your belt there. And it is fantastic to have that. You put your tools there. Now in cable, and there's not a lot of tools, you should have a diagonal uh, cutter. Uh, you should, a decent diagonal cutter. Sometimes I get these cutters and I try to squeeze them and squeeze them, it doesn't even cut the cable, they're junk. Um, and so you get a decent di diagonal cutters. You need a couple different flat heads and a couple different uh, Phillips. And, um, and then, you know, just basic the tools that goes in this little pouch. You don't need a really big pouch. I always like the ones that are soft. I don't like the hard leather ones. Uh, but I always like the ones that are soft and small and I can put everything in there, my tester, things like that. Uh, some small parts sometimes if I need it. But I'm not constantly going up and down the ladder. That's, that's a waste of time. So I have a uh, tool pocket, uh, packet, pocket, pocket, packet, I don't know, something like that. And then next, <laughs> invest, if you're the owner especially, invest in a really decent ladder, you know. I see a lot of these uh, people out there in the, in the area, they're always, uh, they're using aluminum ladders. It's like, no, there shouldn't be aluminum ladders anywhere to be found on a construction site. You should always use the, the fiberglass ladders. So when you go to Home Depot or you go to Lowe's and you're looking at the ladders, pick the ladder with, with the, the highest safety uh, ratings. You know, how much weight is going to go on it, that's first of all. Secondly, um, uh, do not pick aluminum. You, you're, you know, when you're fooling around in the ceiling, if you happen to hit a live wire or something and you're standing on an aluminum ladder, um, you can transmit that uh, down onto the ground sometimes. So you gotta be very careful that way. But more important, if you're putting your employees up on top of a ladder, um, you want them to be safe. Ladders should always be marked. You should have on the side of your ladder, go get yourself a stencil with your business name or even your personal name if it's your personal ladder and, and mark it uh, right on the side of the ladder along with a phone number. Uh, the last thing concerning ladders is do not loan them out. <laughs> I went out to a job site once and I had some guys uh, standing around. I said, what's up? And they said, well, uh, electrician borrowed our ladder, but we can't find them now. And you know, all the work's up in the ceiling and I don't have a ladder. And I said, well, why did you loan it to him? You have to use it. And he goes, well, you know, I'm just trying to be a nice guy. And I understand that. You know, sometimes you just, okay, go ahead, use the ladder for a minute or two, bring it right back. But we went searching for it throughout the building and we found it two stories above us. And the guy, of course, was using our ladder. And I said, well, where's your ladder? He goes, oh, I left it back at the office. <sighs> I don't know how much time we lost on that job by someone just sitting around, you know, going like this, drinking coffee, whatever, waiting for someone to return the ladder. And of course, if you mark it, okay, you're gonna have less likely someone's gonna steal your ladder because it's obvious it's not theirs. And sometimes there's a confusion. Everyone gets the same brand, everyone has the same color. Um, no one has their ladders marked, who's, who's or, you know, who, what ladder belongs to who. And then another thing you need to do when it comes to ladders is you got to make sure that these ladders are secure 
to your ladder rack when you're driving out. Now, one of the things that I did um, is I made it a policy, and, and this is a legal issue, so you may want to talk to a lawyer on this. But for me, I just made a policy, and the policy was that the driver uh, of the vehicle is the one personally responsible for the ladder. Now, other people can help them. You know, sometimes we'd have two or three ladders on top of a truck and someone else could help them. That's not an issue. What the issue was, because I saw one of my ladders hanging off the side of the truck, almost dragging on the road, <laughs> and when I stopped them, uh, you know, my two employees in that, in that small Toyota pickup truck, they did one of these. Oh, it's his responsibility. No, it's his responsibility. So in writing and in your training, when you are training your employees, you got to say, the person who is driving is personally responsible for these ladders. And it should be in writing in your policy book. And next, do not use bungee cords. <laughs> Um, bungee cords are not going to help you in an accident. You hit somebody really hard and you have a 10-foot ladder and you have a bunch of bungee cords or, or uh, tied off with excess cable that you found on the ground, things like that, that's going to go right off and it's going to go in to the back of the vehicle you hit or vice versa if someone hits you. Now, if you didn't tie off properly and you're driving down the freeway and your ladder flips off and it lands in someone's car, uh, you could kill someone with that ladder. So this is an extreme safety issue. Ladders are very, very important. Hey, I just want to take a break and ask you to subscribe, please. If this information is good for you and you've not thought of some of these things and you're learning, then please subscribe and give me a thumbs up and write comments. If you disagree with me or you have another idea or a better idea, fantastic. You know, look, I'm always learning also. So I really appreciate you watching the video. Please subscribe, ring the bell, and also give me a thumbs up. Um, the next is tools. <laughs> Everyone should have tools. Now at the beginning, when I first started my business, uh, I had a basic set of tools that I would give each employee. And I just, man, those tools would disappear all the time. I just couldn't figure out where they were all going, uh, what was going on. So I came to the decision that the best thing to do is require from each in individual, each employee that does cabling for you, should have their own set of tools. And they should have it on the job site. Now, don't loan your tools out. And I remember once a guy showed up at the office and was getting ready to get in the truck, and I said, where's your tools? And he said, oh, gosh, I, I left them home. I'll just borrow from other people, I said, you know, from the other employees. I said, no, you're going to slow them down. Go home and get it. In fact, see you tomorrow. You came to work unprepared. I do not want to send you out and have you slow down everyone else and what they're doing. And of course, I got an argument from him, but he never left his tools home again. So you always have to bring your tools. Now, I did make exceptions, okay? And the exceptions were uh, twofold. One, if you're a brand new newbie, I would loan you tools until you had a paycheck or two under your belt and you can buy your own tools. And uh, I always recommended that when you get tools, don't get expensive ones, okay? I don't own anything from Klein, I'm going to be honest with you. I know in our industry, everybody likes Klein and Klein is the tool thing and all this other stuff. No, just go to Harbor Freight and pick up a couple, uh, you know, screwdrivers uh, some other tools that you may find val valuable, uh, diagonal um, cutters and things like that. Uh, you don't really need fancy tools, but you do need to have the tools there when you need them, obviously. Um, and the other exception was that uh, testers. Now, when you have tests, testers where you're testing the cable, um, you really need to have a tester that uh, is solid, that's really good. And they usually cost anything from like $800 to a couple thousand. And so I would sign out the testers. When a, a group of people went on the job site, I would sign out to one person, the tester, and they were responsible for that tester. And the reason why you need these testers is, you, the way I would explain it to my employees is, if it isn't tested, it probably isn't working. So we tested every single jack, every single RJ45, all the way from the jack, all the way to the patch panel. And uh, so you got to test every single one. Now with testing, usually it's two people, one in the data room and one on the floor. 
Now there's two ways you can communicate back and forth. You can use a cell phone, and I always had assigned cell phones that, that people could take home. They were assigned the company cell phone, and they could talk back and forth on the cell phone. But I'll tell you what's a better thing is go get these $35, $45 uh, rechargeable CB, uh, CD, CB, yeah, Citizens Band, CB, uh, handheld walkie-talkies. They're, they're faster, they're easier, it's not going to run down your battery on your cell phone. So that's what we would do when it comes to tools. Now, let's do this. I'm going to take a break at this time, and I'm going to continue on the next video, and we're going to talk uh, about the other things I recommend. I still have a, a lot of stuff to recommend. And so catch me on the next video. This is getting long, and I don't want it to be a long video. Catch me on the next video, and uh, it would be video number two <laughs> with the name there. But again, subscribe, please. It really helps uh, get... Uh, get the algorithm interested in what I'm doing and present it to more people and give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.